Welcome to the playthrough of version 3.07 of Huff and Puff. We've got a lot of new stuff to show you, so we hope you enjoy what you see. Starting with the menu, we have a few things to show, like the help option, which displays the controls, and the options menu, where you can adjust the volume of the sound effects and music. You can also exit the application from here. Without further ado, let's get started. This is the world map. It's where players select what level they want to play. In future versions, players will be progressively unlock levels, and there may be alternate paths, but for now, all levels are unlocked and available from the start. Let's hop into the tutorial. These are a new feature, Cinematic Introductions. They give players an overview of what the level they've entered is like. This section of the attic is very short, with very few chances for the player to get hurt or lose progress. Before we get into that though, let's talk about the updated pause menu. From here, players can go back to the world map, adjust settings, or return to the menu. This level is mostly about introducing the huff and puff mechanics, and how they work with the interactable objects, like this box. By huffing the box back, the player can move on. They can then choose to puff this mannequin down the hole, if they want to. Reaching the door signals the end of most levels. The next level, the attic, introduces players to the concept of enemies, and focuses mostly on platforming. This is where the player encounters their first enemy, a dust cloud. They patrol specif a specified area until the player pushes them out of them. Next, the player needs to platform up these series of nails. After that, the player then scales across some beams and boxes, where they then reach the attic's door. The hallway introduces the player to their first puzzle. Since they cannot cross the gap, players must move these end tables in place so that they stair step up to the next platform. Once the tables are in place, however, they cannot go back on top of them directly, so they need to find another way around. This is a vent. Vents are used to propel players upward to reach places they couldn't normally get to with their jumps.
After getting across the tables, the player faces a mini boss, a hammer. If the player touches the hammer or the shockwaves that are caused by the hammer's hits, they take damage. The player can't huff, puff, or avoid this enemy, but if the hammer hits the ground three times, the vase will fall over, knocking the hammer out of the way. The bedroom focuses mostly on puzzles, but it introduces a new enemy, the perfume bottle. These will spray damaging perfume and then swivel to spray the other way. It's pretty easy to avoid, but right past this enemy is a trap. By tugging the rug, it causes the jewelry box on top of the ottoman to fall. Players can bait out the jewelry box, however, by pushing the perfume bottle into its path. The player can then safely pass by. The next puzzle requires players to get past the faulty surge protector. Players can time getting past the first three sockets, but the fourth one never shuts off that damaging electricity. So, the player must drag this face over to the surge protector. By blowing it over the surge protector to hit the switch, the surge protector is shut off and the player can pass. The final puzzle involves this pillow. If the player didn't push the pillow off the bed, the player would fall, onto a a fall off the bed and into a spike trap of thumbtacks. The pillow cushions the fall, saving the player. This is the first boss, Shower Headache. It will fill up the tub with damaging water and shoot bubbles at you. The boss doesn't have a lot of direct attacks, but the platforms are slippery, making it hard for the player to jump and stay on the platform. If you grab a bubble out of the air, you can shoot it back at the boss, damaging him. After shooting back three bubbles, the boss is defeated. The office starts out with another enemy, books. The books will fly at players if they get too close, so players have to time their jumps carefully. These cups block the player's path. To get past them, the player must drag the mouse over, moving the on-screen one to the print button. 
This turns on the printer, shooting a piece of paper to move the cups. After turning on the lights and crossing the printers, the player must platform across these bottles, avoiding the electrical sockets to reach the end. The dining room is one big puzzle. Silverware will constantly come down from the ceiling to stab at the player, so the player needs to act quick. The problem is, these spoons blocked away. To get the enemies to stop attacking and the spoons to move, the player must move these plates and wine glasses around trying to match them up with the ones on the other side of the table, over there. To get to the wine glasses in the back row, the player can touch this napkin, rotating them around to the back. Once all dishes are correctly placed, the enemies stop attacking, and they let the player leave the room. In the kitchen, the player will first need to platform across this movable cup. Once here, the player will need to drag the cup from before over to this area. It can then act as a stair step so they can reach the platform of the taller glass. These silverware aren't the, like the ones in the dining room. They'll continually stab at the player. However, the player can stop their movements. If they drag this glass into their path, it'll block their stabs. These damaging olives roll down at the player like barrels. The players can push them back, but since the players have to jump over them anyways, it's best to just avoid them. After that, the players bounce across these bar stools.
Next, by shoving the drain plug, the cup, and the bowls into the sink, the water level rises, and it creates platforms for the player to jump across. After getting past the sockets, the player can then ride the steam from the stovetop over the fire. Finally, the player must blow this chili pepper enemy into the button on the back wall. This causes toast to pop out, and it will knock the pepper away. In the fight against Ireplace, you need to put out this fiery boss using water. However, he hides in the fireplace, so players need to figure out a way to open it. You can do this by sucking up the water in the cup, launching off the lever next to the fireplace, and then spraying down the handle. Once the door is open, Ireplace will try to damage you, but you can take away his health by hitting him with the water. The garage is mostly just enemies and traps. There is a hammer enemy from the hallway, but it doesn't get knocked out automatically, so you have to slide past it. There are also thumbtacks that can fall from the shelves to damage the player. From there, the player just has to navigate to the door. The main objective of the treehouse level is to scale up the tree to reach the puzzle inside. 
The player does this by getting on a series of pulley operated lifts that pull the player towards the top. This lift has several enemies attacking it, so the player needs to move fast to avoid the falling leaves and rocks. However, the lift won't move until the player pushes off the box that's weighing it down. The player will need to push off this box as well, same as the last lift. Inside the treehouse is a light beam puzzle. By huffing or puffing the prisms, the light beam will reflect across the room. Putting all the prisms in place opens the door. The pool is a unique level in that the physics changes when you go under the water, slowing the rate at which the player falls and increasing the jump height. Collecting these rings is the main objective of this level. Collecting all five removes the net blocking the player's path at the end of the level. These torpedo enemies come in two types, green which moves in a straight line and yellow which homes in on the player. Entering this tube takes the player back to the surface, which is necessary to get a ring. By jumping off this diving board, the player gets a super jump and can reach the ring high in the sky. This pool jet acts as a vent, boosting the player to another ring. These pipes shoot more torpedoes, making collecting this ring a bit challenging. The final ring is guarded by this pool cleaner. If it hits the player once, they'll lose all their health. With the final ring collected, the player can leave the pool. The final boss, the Terror Racket, jumps around the court trying to damage the player, 
while ball feeders shoot damaging tennis balls. As the fight progresses, the racket increases its attack range, slamming down on the ground and sliding under the net. Players can beat this boss by grabbing the tennis balls out of the air and shooting them at the racket. Doing this three times defeats the boss. And that was all for right now. We hope you enjoyed what you see. The next time you see an update from us, we should be releasing the alpha version of the game, so look forward to that. But until then, thanks for watching.